Raiders. They are ready to go this time. Snow coming down just after kickoff. The, co the cool conditions, though, would not slow the home team. Some great movement leading to a smart finish from Mauro Camaronesi. 1-0 in the 28th minute. Alessandro Del Piero with a nifty heel. As he knocks this ball to Pavel Nedved. And then it's the Italian international taking care of business from there. Late in the half, Juventus doubling the lead. The centering effort not dealt with. The Maori on the scene. And he's troubled around there. You know that. He makes it two. It is a killer blow for Regina just before the interval. Cross knocked up in the air. And Maori actually gets two cracks at it. The second one is one pays off and leads to a nice slide in the snow. Here you see it. Amaori, one chance. The second, that'll do. Mato Camarnese off injured at the break, but the team just keeps on coming. Giorgio Chiellini counting Juve's third. Snow? What snow? They're just having fun. Claudio, look at him. He's keeping warm. I don't think he has any mitts, but he's pretty safe everywhere else. Chiellini just keeping his focus and getting that ball down. Juventus continuing to make life tough for their guests this time, drawing a penalty kick. That's Sebastian Jovinko getting the call. Del Piero, the assignment. Goal 250 of his career. 4-0 Juventus, pummeling Regina. And that's how it ends. Juve rebounding for that interlock in style. Catania hosts the Lecce in a first ever City A encounter between the two. Lecce's last win away to Catania. 1942, Serie C. Catania in the red and blue strip. In a corner for them as Rocco Zapato puts it to the near post. Gennaro Stando, the header. And Francesco Bonucci with the very impressive save in the ninth minute. A goal is to the break, second half. Marco Biagianti to Michele Paolucci. And he picks the corner with the what right-footed strike, that one in the 62nd. But Lecce would get that back. The long ball assault is the uh, plan here with Gianni Munati heading it back towards his teammate Javier Castillo. And he pumps it past Albano Buzzati. 69th minute to Castillo. had only been on for 60 seconds before he leveled this game. Both sides with chances uh, later on in the game with Simeone Trabocchi to Lecce stopped by Buzzati. And then at the other end, Paolucci is stopped by Benuzzi. Buzzati and Benuzzi in goal as this one ends tied. But Lecce did move up the standings with a single point into 16. The two points clear of third place, Regina. All right, then let's check out the top of the nine game winning streak. From the key to the inter attack. But it's Ivan Cordova getting this one rolling for the home team. The Muntari cross somehow put away by the Colombian. It's 1-0 to enter after just 16 minutes of the game. Cordova always enjoys scoring. This time, no different. He's going to celebrate with a nice little flip. Cordova doing well to hit the elevated ball. And Gennaro Yetso in goal, unable to reach it. Eight minutes later, an absolute gem makes it 2-0. Maicon to Julio Cruz. Maicon to the box. Tuli Muntari there and he puts it away. That's tremendous. Cruz drawing all the attention. Puts it in a good spot and the next thing you know, Muntari is on the scene and there's some of those skills that people are raving about. Napoli trying to claw back later in the half. They get to within a goal. Ezequiel Lavesi, Marcelo Zalayeta teaming up. Lavesi, the scoring touch and that is another special one. It's your lead cut in half. Napoli responding to some magic with something memorable of their own. Zalayeta, the vision and Lavesi the silky smooth foot away. That's how you get it done. Home team looking to put points away in the second half, but Ienzo would not allow it. The Napoli keeper in good position, standing tall. you got to be patient when these plays unfold. He was patient, and he's able to knock the ball away from the goal. But the damage already done. Jose Mourinho's men win it 2-1 the final at the San Siro. Fiorentina's Cesare Prandelli. Adrian Mutu returning to Rome, and Luciano Spalletti coach at Roma. Roma playing in red. They're defending a Fiorentina set piece here, and it's Mutu from distance. And it's tipped out by Brazilian keeper Alex Doni. And this uh, coming early, second minute. Six minutes later, it's Rodrigo Tadai with the giveaway. And Ricardo Montolivo, he has a rip, but Doni saves that as well in the eight. Three minutes later, Roma, the clearance, is headed back towards the Fiorentina goal, and Francesco Totti... Stopped by Sebastian Frey. A lot of action in the first quarter hour. 13th, Mutu. Through ball to Mario Santana. And he's wide out the short side there. Set piece play for Roma as Daniele De Rossi would send it. And Matteo Brighi hits the post to follow up today as a goal. Then has another and then another. And then boots Juan Vargas in the back of the head. Brighi connecting and popping it off the post. And then Kadai. 
uh, goes bonkers as he just can't get this ball through. And uh, Vargas takes that shot to the noggin, but he was all right. Uh, Brigi out the far side here for today, and a quick pass in front. And Tati, heavy hit. 59th minute. As Tati goes, so it seems as Roma pass Frey and in. Roma's lead almost extended to two. Julio Baptista, the animal, hits the crossbar, a fierce strike. Roma wins this one, 1-0. One Stadio Renzo Barbera, the venue where Palermo fans were up and ready for this encounter. They had AC Milan in front of them. 25th, Palermo keeper Marco Amelia bowls over Alessandro Pato. A yellow for the keeper and a PK for Milan. Pato was subbed off for Pifo. From the spot, Ronaldinho stopped by Amelia as the keeper redeems himself. And his teammates very excited, giving Amelia a migraine at the same time. Ronnie could have made it 1 0 before the break. Uh, second half, five minutes in. Palermo's Fabrizio Micoli drops it into that far corner past Christian Abiati. And the former Benfica man so accurate with the strike. And yes, there was a yellow for excessive celebration. A seventh on the season. Palermo would then go two goals up. Edson Cavani, 2-0 on the 59th minute. Textbook stuff, really. Fabio Liberani locks it to Cavani and he parks it to the top corner. Palermo playing confidently in the land was sinking. Federico Balzaretti to Fabio Simplicio. And Simplicio with the Simplicio header. 80th. 3-0, and there was no way back from Milan after that, or was there? Ronnie would take on the Palermo defense and throws himself to the ground, and take PK attempt number two. And this time he gets it. Should have scored the first, and maybe would have changed the complexion of this game. Palermo take all the points. 3-1, the final. Lazio win listen two as they hit Bergamo to face Atalanta, the managers, and they quick chat, three for kick, and then down to business, the home team on the move. Quick pass to Cristiano Done. He sets up a scoring chance for Sergio Floccari, but Floccari's shot is blocked. No goals in the opening half for either side, as it turns out. Second 45. It's Atalanta surging forward, hungry to get the opener. And they will. Vandal Valdez dishing to Floccari. He stopped, but Valdez will pound home that rebound. 1-0 home side. Juan Pablo Carrizo unable to recover. After committing the first attempt, the Argentine keeper slowing the surge, that is for sure, but help us on the second shot. Atalanta not satisfied with one goal. They keep attacking. Carrizo with a solid stop, keep it at 1-0. Good positioning and then a smart reaction near post. Lazio getting sloppy as they try to fight back. Flocari capitalizing all kinds of space and time, and that's all he needs. Two zip Atalanta. The keeper left on his own, and he can't reach out and touch that one. It's beyond the visitors. Missing goal in Pandev. Maybe that was a factor. This scrappy threat almost working out. Ferdinando Coppola won't let it. Still a two-goal game. More desperate Lazio. More Coppola before full time. This goal, or at least attempted goal, bravely broken up by the keeper. Coppola keeps it clean. Atalanta wins by two. Last-minute touch-up to Stadio Fruili as Udinese played host to Chievo Verona. Interesting little unit there. Uh, Udinese in the black and white entered this one. Uh, losers of three straight. Chievo and yellow losers of six. Looks like your car. It did a little, didn't it? The color. A uh, couple of players getting up in each other's faces here. Antonio Di Natale uh, pushing Fabio Moro. The referee arrives on the scene. The players uh, getting all involved here. And the referee trying to flash the card. There it is. Red card for Di Natale and yellow for Moro in the 58. Scoring chances were few, but here's the uh, game winner. Diaz Felipe in the 87th. An own goal. Chievo with the lead and with only minutes to the full-time whistle and Philippe just returning from an eight-month injury layoff. Thanks for coming back. Uh, Sergio Felicia hits the speedy Antonio Langella. Samir Handanovic comes out and blocks it. But Chievo Verona get the goal they need and a first win for them since opening day. The lines held up very nicely, I thought. Genoa home to Bologna next. Hosts unbeaten, untied at home so far this season. The supporters wanting it to stay that way. Odd moment in the goal month early on. Genoa with numbers, but the shot will get through. Gavinia the save. Always keep your eye on the ball, they say, but I think he took it a bit too literally this time. Whoops. In the face later, Bologna using their pace to penetrate a little deeper. The cross getting through, but this one is skied in tight. Look at that chance sailing away. A close shave, you might say. 
And that right side, the source of more opportunity. This cross also almost ending up in the Genoa goal. Francesco Valiani liking his positioning, but not making contact. Fabinho shaken up. He would stay in the game. Second half, Genoa with a turn in the offensive third. And they're more efficient. Giuseppe Sculli, 1-0 home team, 10 minutes into the period. Sculli making friends with the sponsors. And this is what I mean by that. He goes over and he shows a little love to the people paying his tab. Well, next to Stomp, too. He may not know how to treat those ad boards, but he certainly knows what to do in front of goal. And that's what I mean. Bologna, unwilling to pack it in. They are rewarded for their determination. The cross rammed in by Marco DeVaio. Tie game, just a little bit of space for Marco and the cross, absolutely perfect. Then the visitors coming close to taking the full points. Bologna's Diego Coelho with a chance, well saved by Rubinho. That rebound, it's steered away. Not much time to think, and Rubinho's reflexes serve him very well. Genoa and Bologna share the points. Reflected strike.